All right, everybody. We're going to get into our first work um, in the Colonial American Unit. And this is from the General History of Virginia. This is just a an excerpt. This is not the entire thing. But uh, the General History of Virginia was written by Captain John Smith. And uh, let's get into it. So the editors of this book chose to preface everything with this. The fault of our going was our own. So what can we infer from this? Things probably didn't go very well for John Smith and the gang. All right. Things perhaps didn't go so well. Let's find out why. All right, so now remember, the men of the Virginia Company were coming here not for religious freedom like their Puritan compatriots, but for wealth, right? To make something of themselves. So that is their motivation. So let's see how it goes. So this first section is from what happened till the first supply. Being thus left to our fortunes, it fortuned that within ten days, scarce ten among us could either go or well sand. Such extreme weakness and sickness oppressed us. So, how about that? Within ten days, barely anybody could say. Everybody was sick. Everybody was sick. They're at none need, and they're at none need marvel if they consider the cause and reason, which was this. So this is why. Okay? While the ships stayed... So they were brought over here. Um, some of them stayed. The crew of the ship, some of the crew of the ship, went back to England, right? This was their job, bring them across the sea and come back. So while that ship stayed, our allowance was somewhat bettered by a daily portion of biscuit, which the sailors would pilfer to sell, give, or exchange with us for money, sassafras, or furs. All right, so when the ship stayed... They had extra supplies. All right. But when they departed, there remained neither tavern, beer house, nor place of relief but the common kettle. Had we been, this is it, had we been free from all sins as gluttony and drunkenness, we might have been canonized for saints, but our president would never have been admitted for engrossing to his private oatmeal sack, oil, aquavita, beef eggs, or whatnot, but the kettle. So basically he was saying that they were used to having that extra ship there that had extra supplies for them to use. Um, and then when the ship left, they didn't know what to do. And the president of the colony had, you know, um, in his, when they say private, that means, if you look down here, his private personal stock of food, um, you know, oatmeal and good water and beef and eggs. The president of the colony had food, but he wasn't sharing it with anybody. And he's like, y'all fend for yourselves. That indeed he allowed equally to be distributed, the food that was set aside for the men. So what did the men have to eat? What's going on here? There you go. So every day, the men of the colony were allowed half a pint of wheat and as much barley boiled with water for a man a day. And this, having fried some 26 weeks in the ship's hold, contained as many worms as grains. So that we might truly call it rather so much bran than corn. Our drink was water. Our lodgings, castles in the sky. So, what is he saying here? The food they had to eat was rotten. Okay. They had no shelters. Oh. 
right? They were still living in camps. That's what he means when he says our lodgings, castles in the sky. And he says our drink was water. At this time, you know, water wasn't, you know, turn on the faucet and you get some nice, clean, bacteria-free water. Um, I think Benjamin Franklin, this is, of course, hundreds of years after this, said, in beer, there is laughter. In water, there is disease. These men pretty much drank beer because the alcohol in the beer, or the ale, killed any bacteria, right? So they were drinking probably infected water, which is probably why they were getting sick. And they had no food, and they had no homes. Things are rough. With this lodging and diet, our extreme toil in bearing and planting palisades. So palisades, if you look down here, are pointed stakes set into the ground to form a fence or fortification for defense. Um, so they were sick. They had no real food. They had no shelters. They were planting these palisades, which is heavy, heavy work. This so strained and bruised us that our continual labor in the extremity of the heat had so weakened us as were caused sufficient to have made us as miserable in our native country than any other place in the world. These people are miserable. From May to September, so in the summer, those that escaped sickness, that is, lived upon sturgeon and sea crabs. Fifty in this time we buried. So let's see, May, June, July, August, September. That's ten people a month. Now, when you only show up with a little over a hundred people, that's a lot of people, all right? The rest, seeing the president's projects to escape these miseries in, in our Pinace by flight. So this is a small sailing ship. So everybody was sick and dying. It is now getting on the winter, and they find out that the president of the colony was trying to escape with their only boat. How about that? Okay. Doesn't sound like very strong leadership to me. The president's projects to escape these miseries in our Pinace by flight, who all this time had neither felt want nor sickness, and that's the other rub. The president had his own supply of good food. So this so moved our dead spirits as we deposed him and established Ratcliffe in our place. So they've been there for what? Six, five, six months. Second president. Mm -hmm. But now all of our provisions spent, they have nothing left, okay? The sturgeon gone because their, I guess, little migrant pattern is over. It's the winter now. All help abandoned, each hour expecting the fury of the savages, when God, the patron of all endeavors, in that desperate extremity so changed the hearts of the savages that they bought such plenty of their fruits and provisions as no man wanted. So, things are bad. The native people actually showed up and gave them, like, food, right? Um, ostensibly because they must have seen these people suffering and felt bad, right? So. Native people show up. Give them food and supplies. Okay, how about that? And now, were some confirmed? Were some affirmed? It was ill done of the council to. Okay, now here's the thing. This is the rub. People are getting pissed now, right? So the council is the group in charge of the Virginia Company. All right. So let's look here. Now some were affirmed. It was so ill done of the council to send forth men so badly provided. This incontradictable reason will show them plainly that they are too ill-advised to nourish such ill conceits. Okay. So he's basically saying... The men are pissed. That they were sent here. So underprepared. I eat. So, 
He said, first, the fault of our going was our own. Uh Uh-huh. What could be thought fitting or necessary had we had, but what we should find or want or where we should be, we were all ignorant. And supposing to make the passage in two months, with victual to live and the advantage of the spring to work, we were at sea five months, where we both spent our victual and lost the opportunity to of the time and season to plant by the unskillful this is it by the unskillful presumption of our ignorant transporters that understood not at all what they undertook so they thought that they had enough had enough supplies What they thought would be two months. Journey was five. Ended up a five month journey. So by the time they arrived, They already went through their extra supplies. And it was too late to plant crops. Smith blames the unskillful presumption of the ignorant people that sent them there. You know, the leaders of the Virginia colony, or Virginia company, rather. don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Things are not going well. So, he says, such actions ever since the world's beginning been subject to such accidents, and everything of worth is found full of difficulties, but nothing so difficult as to establish a commonwealth so far removed, ah, but nothing so difficult as to establish a commonwealth so far remote from men and means, and where men's minds are so untoward as neither do well themselves nor suffer others, but to proceed. So he's basically saying that, you know, an endeavor of this kind is bound to be difficult, but nobody foresaw this. So, the new president in Martin, another leader, being little beloved of weak judgment and dangers and less industry and peace, committed the managing of all things abroad to Captain Smith. Ah, now listen to this. Okay, so Smith describes the president in Martin, I guess another leader of the group, as being little loved, weak in judgment, uh, you know, basically angry, warlike people. So they committed everything to Captain John Smith. They gave him the run of the show. And listen to how he describes himself. Okay, uh, let's make this a, there you go. Captain Smith, who by his own good, ex, own example, good words and fair promises set some to my, so the real leaders were, people hated them, they had poor judgment, but everybody loved John Smith because he always set such a good example and he was so fair and X and Y and everything else. So, hooray for him, right? So he said, some to mow, others to bind that, some to build houses, others to thatch them, himself always bearing the greatest task for his own share, so that in short time he provided most of them lodgings, neglecting any for himself. So, Smith essentially Smith takes credit for organizing the men
in getting the settlement together. All right, so we're going to pause here. This is the first section of the reading. Join me next time to see what happens when John Smith gets captured along the Chicka.